this is Pop YS, which is our monthly continuing education series where we have a pop of continuing education. Um, I'm Angie Manfredi, the Youth Services Consultant. As per usual, here's my little inf information slide. Um, here's just the general reminder you'll hear over and over again. When this is over, you will get a copy of this slide deck. So you'll see some links, you'll see some media in this slide deck. When it is over, you will get a copy of it sent directly to your inbox. So do not have any fear. Um, so this is my contact information. Please get in touch with me if you have follow-up questions, which I hope you will, or if you have questions of any kind. Um, I usually always like to include a picture. So this is a picture of the latest books I have bought. <laughs> I've been buying a lot of books in isolation and quarantine. I buy a couple every week. It's not great, according to my husband, but what does he know? So this is the latest copy of books that I bought. Um, I just last night finished Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson. I'm obsessed with it. It reminds me so much of Ramona. It's like the cutest book I've read all year. Um, so this is my current uh, to be read reading shelf and also my Angels in America pen cup. So just as a reminder uh, that these are hard time, times that we are living in and you should do things in your personal life that bring you comfort and solace. And for me, that's purchasing beautiful, shiny hardcover books so that I have another world to escape into. And this is my reminder that you are important and caring for yourself is one of the best and greatest things you can do for your community in this time. And I want you to always remember that what you do matters. And I want you to remember that you are important and your needs matter. Um, so it's always good to state that right up front. What we're up to today, you know, I like that better than an agenda. You're not going to hear me talk that much today. I know <laughs> it's crazy because that's what I do. Um, we're going to, you're going to hear very briefly from me about the Great Reads from Great Places program. And then we're going to be joined by the author and special guests to discuss the book. During this time, we want to hear your questions. So um, Sam and I will be keeping an eye on the chat. Um, please let us know your questions, share ideas that you have in there, and we will get to that as we go on. So let's start with a little bit about what Great Reads from Great Places is. First of all, I think that this program, I, there are so many ways I couldn't have predicted how perfect all of this came together, even in the worst time ever. Uh, and so I wanted to start with this quote, reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. Has anything ever been more appropriate? And does anything fit better with the idea of a book list of titles that take you across the country? So Great Reads from Great Places used to be called Discover Great Places Through Reading, which is what it was originally called this webinar before they renamed it. It's kind of a mouthful. And it is basically a list of books representing the literary heritage of all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. territory. So that includes the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Puerto Rico, all of our territories, as well as District Columbia and all 50 states. Um, books are written by authors who live in the state or, take, or they take place in the state, but the goal is that they celebrate the state's cultural heritage, their unique literary heritage. And it's pretty neat because I think we all know that one of the best ways you can learn about a place is by reading about it. And so this is a really incredible list. Um, and it's gone, they date back to 2002. They might be back farther than that, but that's what exists online. And this is amazing. And while we're going through all of this, we're not just talking about this title, I want you to think about the so many ways that you can program and display and talk about these titles all the time, but especially in a time when all of us have to stay where we are. Um, I've learned so many things through these books. The majority of them are uh, for children and teens. Very, very rarely a title for adults is chosen, but the majority of these are children and teen titles. And um, they tell you about great historical moments in the state. They take place in current times in the state. They're from authors who are from that state. It's, it's just a really great list. And in the past, it was celebrated annually at the Parade of States Pavilion at the National Book Festival in Washington, DC. And here's some pictures from what it looked like last year. Uh, remember when you used to go in crowds? <laughs> Do you guys remember that from like the before? Um, so the Parade of States is every state has their own booth and at their booth, they celebrate their book and everybody comes around and hears about the book. And you also, there were in alphabetical order and I think we're in alphabetical order. Here's a picture of what it looks like. Literally thousands of people come through the course of the day. It's a ton of fun. 
Last year, I got to present at the National Book Festival because they have authors presenting and they have all kinds of cool stuff going. So this is me. Yes, last year, I was reading one of my all-time favorite storytime books, um, which is My People, um, which is illustrated by Charles Smith, written by Langston Hughes. Um, I'm with my friend Liz Burns, who's talking about Braille, and we have a, um, a sign language interpreter next to us as I'm reading. And this is what our both look like. Iowa, woo, woo. Uh, last year, our book was Blue Sky, White Skies, Sky. Blue Sky, White Stars by Sarvender Neighborhouse, who's an Ames resident. Um, and it's illustrated by Kadir Nelson, who won the uh, Caldecott Medal this year. Um, and this is what our booth looked like last year. We saw thousands of people. They bring little passports. We stamped them. But as I'm sure you're not surprised, the National Book Festival was canceled last year was canceled for this year because of the plague. So we adapted because that is what librarians do best. That is what our, our superpower is. Our superpower is to adapt and that's what we did this year. And so one of the ways that the National Book Festival has adapted is they've moved a lot of this stuff online. And I decided that this was the perfect chance for us to really drill down and share about this book. Instead of just me telling you what it is or us releasing a press conference, uh, a press release, which we're going to do all that, don't worry. Um, we wanted to make something really fun. We wanted to make this an experience and we wanted to get you excited about this book because I'm excited about this book. When I read it, I felt so grateful that I had moved to Iowa. It makes me think this state is like the coolest place in the world. And so because the National Book Festival got canceled and because we didn't get to go have the Pavilion of States where there's a million people, we thought let's put this webinar together and make a big deal about this choice because this is still a really cool program and because this is a really amazing book. And that's what today is. And I'm so glad that you're all here because that adds to the specialness and the excitement of this. And I hope that you feel that too. So that is enough of me talking. Don't worry, I'm going to talk some more because I never stop talking, as you know. But we are so lucky to be joined by the author and some of the people who helped make this book through art and through business sense and through Iowa can do, we want to put a show together, we're going to do it just like the Music Man, which as you guys know, I'm obsessed with. Um, Iowa's 2020 selection for the great reads from great places is, drum roll, I want everybody to do a drum roll on your desktop right now. Tell me you're doing it. Tell me you're doing it. Iowa's 2020 selection for the great reads from great places is, Amazing Iowa Women by Dr. Katie Swalwell, who is joining us now, along with some of her contributors. Um, Jen Leatherby, who helped make the book happen at uh, Raygun, and also uh, did some of the illustrations. I want to tell you a little bit about why I chose this book briefly. This is a celebration of some of the most amazing women in the world, and they all happen to be from Iowa. And it is written in a way that tells kids of all ages and all genders that you can be and do great things from where you are and who you are exactly the way you are. That you can challenge the system, that you can bring joy to your community, that you have something to say and that you are important. Um, I, I couldn't have imagined that this book would be so perfect for the era that we're living in now. It's a book about community. It's a book about connection. Um, Dr. Swalwell created it on her own. It's printed through Raygun. Um, didn't wait for a publisher to pick it up. Um, Raygun, who we are so honored and lucky to have in our community, said, we believe in this. We are going to be a part of this community, and we are going to make this book happen. Um, and as some of you know, it is the 100th anniversary of suffrage in which we honor um, the continuing to this day fight to bring justice, equality, and suffrage to women of all, all backgrounds. Um, it couldn't have been a better choice. I'm so excited. This is our choice. Um, so we're joined by Jen and Katie. Uh, they're going to talk to us a little bit about the book and uh, how it came to be and how it was created. And I'm going to turn it over uh, to Dr. Swalwell now. I'm going to stop sharing now. Great. Hey, everybody. It's so nice to be here, Angie. Thank you for that awesome introduction. Jen, did that make you feel like all those hours we put into it was worth it? Uh, I'm super excited that Jen and I could be here today. We also have uh, one of the artists, I think, is here with us, Alex Barr. Um, so I'm hoping Alex can chime in, too. Uh, I'm going to share a, a quick little slideshow that gives some background. So I'm going to go to, oops. 
I'm going to turn my screen off and mute, but I'm still here. Okay. Okay, great. I'm going to share my screen. And then it always takes me a second. My fingers aren't fast enough to make that super seamless, but there we go. Um, I wanted to say too that Jen and I worked really hard on Amazing Iowa Women uh, with a whole bunch of artists behind us. And it was such a great experience and it was uh, such a success that we came out with a second volume, kind of a sequel, Amazing Iowa Athletes. And I know I just texted Jen the other day, I've already got the lists for like three more books. So we're hoping that this continues to just build momentum and that people see a need for these biographies. Just to set you up a little bit, when I grew up in Iowa and moved away for many years uh, to go to grad school and I was a teacher, a high school social studies teacher, and then went to grad school and became a professor in the School of Education, uh, moved to Iowa State, got a job here. And when I came back, um, these were things I was thinking about. First, um, and I don't, I'm don't. i talking to librarians, so I don't have to tell you this, that uh, children's lit, it's maybe getting a little bit better for sure, but it's still not a very um, diverse selection of books um, by authors of color in particular or featuring children's of, children of color. So really wanting to make sure that anything I contributed was helping improve diversity. And, and in the book, you'll see we think of diversity um, along lines of race, ethnicity, religion, social class, gender identity and expression, uh, really kind of a wide definition of diversity. We also know that, especially at the elementary level in social studies, that in the state of Iowa, on average, elementary children are getting only 60 minutes at most per week of social studies, which is not enough. It's not a lot. And we need at least 60 minutes a day, if not full days of rich social studies integrated with all other subjects. So I wanted to put out a resource, especially when Iowa came up with a new set of social studies standards uh, two years ago, maybe three years ago now, um, that required Iowa history to be taught at every single grade level K-12, and there were not very good resources for teachers. So this is just an overview of what the standards are. Heads up, Angie's going to share this slideshow with everybody, so you will have access to all the information that we're sharing with you today. Uh, so when I thought about this, that children's literature is not nearly as diverse as it needs to be, social studies time is extremely limited, especially at the elementary level, and Iowa just rolled out these requirements that every single grade level has to teach Iowa studies, Iowa history. Um, I was really worried that this is what we were going to teach kids, was like a canonical, white bread, very limited, very narrow, often inaccurate history, that those were the resources that teachers had access to. Many of the teachers themselves, these are people I work with in the School of Ed who come through our program and become teachers. Because their K-12 experience was extremely limited, they don't know a lot of the background information themselves. And so I thought, okay, what can we do? Um, Jen and I were also really inspired. Jen, I'm thinking about your desk at Raygun. You always have these books ready to go for us to take a look at. Um, recently, there have been some really cool books that have come out that are like little biography books for kids to read, specifically looking at women. Um, there's some new great books that have intersectional identities for women and collections of biographies, so we were inspired by that. Um, Raygun was amazing. Jen, do you want to talk about our initial meetings and why Raygun decided to sign on to this project? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, this is, I mean, honestly, probably my favorite project that I've done with Raygun. So I'm super excited about it. Um, working with Katie has been amazing. Um, in general, Raygun has always um, tried to, you know, make the community better and to be like a, a cultural sort of guidepost. Um, so, so when Katie came to us, um, Mike, the owner, and I were immediately super excited. Um, I was really lucky because I kind of was able to take the reins on it um, and do a lot of the like creative direction um, for the book. So uh, Mike agreed to, you know, pay for all of the printing and sell it. And we did all of the promotion. Um, but it was it was a really fun project for me because uh, Katie's obviously wrote an amazing book um, and I got to work with all of these awesome artists and um, you know my other job is actually as a portrait artist and so that's what this whole book is so I got to kind of combine my like graphic design um, with my love for portrait making and I got to 
see all of these other amazing portrait artists and how they interpreted this call and just made these awesome um, works. So yeah, that's kind of my part of it. Um, yeah, I got to do a lot of the fun stuff. Katie did all the hard work, I feel like. I, oh, I mean, yes, I, it is a kind of thing where I would stay up late at night for hours and hours. And Jen and I have talked about this, how time would just fly by and I wouldn't know like, oh, I've just spent like five hours. It's two in the morning and I'm still doing research and I don't want to go to bed. And I'm just so inspired and so excited. And how can we squeeze in more stories about these women? And um, did you know this? Did you know that? I, and it just felt like the universe was conspiring with us. Like, I would walk somewhere and I would see, um, you know, like an event poster honoring someone that I had never heard of before. And I'd look into it or, you know, just stumble across stories of, of people to include. We were just, yeah, super, super excited. We're also both, I think, um, very strong feminists and social justice is a huge part of our lives. And, and we're both activists and, and trying really hard to make our communities places that are more equitable and inclusive and, and just. And so to have a way to celebrate and lift up stories of women who also were fighting to do that is feels like a way to contribute to the community too, in that way. Um, Reagan has been incredibly generous. They dedicated Jen's time to it. They did put up all the money for the printing and the um, graphic design. They handle all the sales because oh my God, I would never want to handle that, um, which is great. But we did need to commission the artists and we wanted to compensate them for their work. So I put together a crowdfunded um, Indiegogo site. And within two weeks, we raised over $10,000. People were really excited about contributing. Um, whether it was $5, I had a couple of random people I had never met donate over $1,000. So we ended up making enough money to pay for all the artists and a traveling exhibit, which now is kind of useless because no one is in person anywhere ever, but it does exist for when we want to bring those back. The artists, like Jen said, um, this was, I think, one of our favorite parts of the project was just networking with these incredible people. And Jen, I don't know if you remember, but when we were meeting with Mike at the very beginning, and he said, maybe we just have one artist. <laughs> like, it seems like a lot to coordinate all these people. But I think Jen and I were both really committed to having this project not just lift up the stories of women, but to have this project lift up um, artists from Iowa. So every single artist um, either identifies as a woman or gender nonconforming, gender nonbinary. Uh, they are all connected to Iowa, either born and raised here or had lived here um, all deeply committed to Iowa. And so to have over, you know, 25, I think it was, it ended up being 28 different artists and having their work promoted and celebrated was really cool. Alex, if you're, if you're here, do you want to talk about the experience of getting the call, getting selected and, and working on your portrait, what that was like? So this is Sam Bowers. I don't see Alex on the participants list right now. Um, unless Alex, if you're here, you want to throw um, your name up in the chat and I can promote you so that you can use your mic. Jen, as an artist who contributed a portrait, do you want to talk a little bit about the call, you know, being thinking about making a portrait that told a story for young readers who might not be able to read all the text yet, but could tell the story from the picture, just how you thought about that as the artist? Yeah, um, and with regards to the the whole um, like hiring all of these different artists, aside from you know designing the book, that for me was like really special because as an artist, it sometimes is really hard to get you know paid gigs and um, to be published specifically is really special. Um, so I was excited all around, and I. Um, I chose Leslie Hall, if people know who that is. Um, she has been like one of my favorite artists for a long time. She's a musician and um, visual artist and she does, um, she even does like a kid's show I think now and all of these different things. Just an incredibly creative person. Um, she lives in Ames now and uh, I drew her portrait and she's like just, she, I feel like maybe I got like the easiest person because I wanted it to be colorful like for me that's what draws kids in in a big way and she is like one of the most colorful people that 
I think I've ever met or seen perform. Um, she does like sequins and like shiny clothes. It's just, it's an incredible show. Um, so I was really excited to be able to um, draw her portrait and uh, have it published in the book. Um, and yeah, like the artists were compensated well, which is again, like I said, not, not an easy thing for artists to find all the time. And so I, you know, would, would be comfortable speaking on behalf of all of the artists just to say that it was like an amazing opportunity um, to do that. And I'm so excited that we're doing more books too. So we can just keep hiring more artists and um, just going from there. I think too, Jen and I talked about this a lot that we were super intentional about making sure there was an incredibly diverse lineup of women featured in the book for biographies. And we were really committed to making sure that the artists behind the work were just as diverse as the women. And it's totally doable. <laughs> like you, you need to be intentional and you need to be deliberate and seek it out and name it that that's what you're looking for. But we had um, really an incredible lineup of artists. And, and that's something that's exciting to me too. I've included some artists that also contributed to Amazing Iowa Athletes on this page. So that's why there's someone pictured here. Um, but I, I am really, really proud of the fact that we've been so intentional about making sure that we have black and indigenous and people of color artists and queer artists and um, that, that we have super professional, like very established, well-known artists. We also have people that this was their first commission that they ever had. And um, just trying to really celebrate the work of Iowa artists as part of this book too. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. Even though logistically it's very complicated and like getting, you know, trying to keep track of everybody and making sure everyone got paid and who's turning their thing in and when and how um, it's a lot. But again, the universe conspired to bring this all together and I had the list of people that were featured in the book and then sent out a form so people could identify, the artists could identify who they wanted to illustrate. And it kind of perfectly fell out. Like everyone got the person that they wanted to illustrate. That was sort of amazing to me too. So again, feeling like it was all sort of meant to be. Um, I mentioned this that I spent hours at night researching this, but it was over a year. Uh, I want to shout out some of the sites that were super helpful to me, which are also sites I would hope that librarians would access for great information. Um, Migration is Beautiful is this incredible website um, through the University of Iowa that has digitized archives of Latinx migration and immigration to Iowa. They've got um, a Mujeres site that's just incredible that focuses on the story of women in particular. The Iowa Women's Archives at the University of Iowa is fabulous. Their digital collection is incredible. The Iowa Department of Human Rights has a, an award for women that stretches back decades. And so I really relied on um, women that they had honored and nominated as, as part of what I looked at. Um, and then the Des Moines Register has a database. I mean, I will say it was helpful, but it's also a database that's very white, um, very heavily male, but I still was able to get some leads from that database as well. Um, Angie, if anybody has questions that are missing in the chat, please feel free to stop us. At I, we're kind of watching it. I think everybody's just drinking it all up. Okay, um, but everybody, if you have questions, uh, feel free to weigh in with them now. I think this is the part they're excited about to see some of the people we'll who are see. featured. Yeah. yeah, the illustrations are so great. So, so we also wanted to make sure, um, you know, we had regions of the state represented. We, I mean, we literally had like a calculus spreadsheet, like, okay, here's our formula. Do we have something representing different historical eras, women who were very old, women who were very young, um, women who were very famous, women who are not famous at all, um, really trying to have as representative and a breadth of the female experience in Iowa as possible. So these are some of the women and some of the artists that are featured. Um, some of my favorite portraits that are here. Really, I, I can't pick a favorite because they're all wonderful. Jen, I don't know if you could see when you were talking about Leslie that I was holding up the picture of Leslie for everybody to see. I love that one so much. That was the first one we did. And I think when I started to be able to see how the book was going to come together. Um, yeah, so these are, these are some great pieces. Um, I don't know if anybody has questions in particular about any of these people. There's one story I wanted to tell that I think um, is it, kind of like an, a classic tale of this book, um, both in the impact it can make on people, but also just how Iowa is, um, you know, a small place. And every time I've shared this book with audiences, 
someone has a personal connection, like, oh my gosh, that's my cousin, or oh, that's my former teacher, or you know, they have some personal connection because we're not that big of a state. Um, this picture here of Katie Mead, um, who's represented as um, they all represent different professions as well, or different like domains of society to contribute in. And so she represents model and a beauty and fashion kind of domain. And she um, also has Down syndrome. And it's just this incredible woman. I was reading so much about her. I was super inspired. And my cousin has Down syndrome. And I talked to my aunt. I said, hey, do you, do you know this woman? Do you know this family? And she said, yeah, of course I do. By the way, they live on your street. She lives like seven houses down from me at the corner of my street. And I didn't know it was just a part of the street. We don't walk by very often. So I went and knocked on the door and introduced myself and said, how do you feel about being in my book? Is that okay? Um, and they were really thrilled. Also with her portrait, I was doing uh, this kind of presentation for a corporate retreat. They have um, Mid-America Energy has uh, like a multicultural education network for professional development. And they asked me to come in and share about the book. And so this was a corporate office event and a man was there to see it. And he began to cry at the event because his daughter has down syndrome. And he said, he's never seen her represented in a children's book before or held up as anything other than just her, her ability and just her identity as someone with down syndrome. And, and he broke into tears in front of his colleagues that that really meant a lot to him. And he couldn't wait to share that with his daughter. So I think the power of representation is so huge. And like Angie was saying, the idea that, that Iowans, you know, there's actually research about this, that we're one of the states that is most likely to think our state doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyone have any guesses about which states think they matter more than anybody else? Hello. Uh, it's Virginia and Texas. I've lived in Virginia and I can tell you that that's very true. Virginians think very highly of themselves, but Iowans don't, generally speaking. And so for us to be able to share stories of these really remarkable people to inspire young readers, especially, um, that's super important to me. So um, I had a little activity I thought we could do um, just to kind of get us engaged with the book, especially as to Andrew's point that we're hitting the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. What I love about this picture is it shows you just the way that the book is not afraid to really get into complicated issues in a kid-friendly way, in a developmentally appropriate way, to talk about various forms of oppression, to talk about social movements and social change. So I want you to take a look at this portrait. And every portrait tells a story. Every portrait has clues that help kids think about the biography and give them some ideas. So one of the activities I recommend, there's a website that goes along with this book that has curriculum ideas. And one of the activities is to give kids just the portraits and have them brainstorm what they think these women did or what they think their contributions were based on the portrait. So I'm gonna look in the chat box here and I'm curious, oh, I like how someone guessed California as the state that thinks of itself most highly, but no, it's Texas and Virginia. Um, so if you could put into the chat box anything that you notice in this portrait that you think is like a clue about the story of the suffragists that were working in Iowa. Ah, they weren't just white women. You can see that there are some men in the background of the picture. You also see a woman of color in the front, a black woman. Um, the white woman is looking away from the black woman. When I shared this with third graders, at the time that we worked on this book, I was embedded in a third grade classroom in Des Moines for some research. And I had them proofread the biographies for me to make sure they were third grade friendly and to do these activities to make sure they made sense for third graders. And so one little girl goes, ooh, that lady's giving her side eye. Like she could tell that the black lady's like not having it with these white women. And that is the story of the suffragist movement. And in particular, the story of the most famous Iowa suffragist is Carrie Chapman Catt. And she has an incredibly complicated and um, problematic history in terms of advocating for white supremacy and that she would make the argument that people should support women's suffrage because it would help support white supremacy. Um, there, that She was not unique in that. The this women's suffrage movement had a lot of white women leaders who were not interested in being in solidarity with their sisters of color. And that continues to this day in feminist spaces and feminist circles. That's still something, um, I say this as a white woman, that um, that is a problem that we need to 
work on. So even little third graders can pick up on these issues and that the pictures themselves really help to tell that, that story. I see in the chat that people are shouting out um, different women. Um, Shelby Houlihan from Sioux City, is she one of the athletes? I can't remember if we have her listed in the athletes book or not. Jen, does that name sound familiar to you? I don't, th I don't know. I don't think so. I'm going to have to put her on the list. And another question asked, how did you ever pick or weed through these amazing people? It was super, super, super hard. And there were lots of people, yes, next edition, um, lots of people that didn't get into the book that I would have loved to include. Um, really, like I said, we have this kind of calculus of wanting to make sure that all these different um, combinations, intersecting identities were represented. And so we would sort of shuffle it around. Um, for instance, I, I wanted to make sure Indigenous women were represented and Adeline Wanati is A for Adeline. It's organized in an alphabet way. So it's the first letter of all the women's names, which was another kind of organizing feature that helped narrow it down. Um, so Zoe Ann Olson, uh, as an Olympic diver, was definitely going to get in because her name started with Z, <laughs> but she also has an incredible story that she grew up in a community that had no pool, um, Laporte City, and she wanted to train as a swimmer and a diver, and so she practiced on the trampoline in her backyard. P.S. The trampoline invented by an Iowan. You guys, I'm not. You can go down rabbit holes for days with this. It's unbelievable. Um, so that was really important, I think, just that we had women that represented, and then in the back of our heads, we knew. We had these other volumes we wanted to do and hopefully stories could be included. Also on each page, you'll see we got sneaky. So there's a portrait on one side and then on the other side is a biography. And then each um, page has this little inset box that crams in as many other women as we could that also had to do with the profession that's involved. So here, um, Flora Dunlap, we say it, said is a, an amazing organizer. So we were able to talk about her community organizing work. But then down here, we were able to include a story of Nettie Yonker, um, who was a Polish Jewish immigrant um, in the late 1800s, and that she was an incredible organizer to build the first synagogue in the state. Um, and, and did a lot of community work for Jewish immigrants that were coming over to Iowa and to the United States. So we were sneaky and tried to get in as many women as we could um, into the book. Um, I'm going to make sure I, I have other questions pulled up here. There's the chat. Um, here's my email. I, and here's the cover of the Amazing Iowa Athletes book, too, that follows the same exact template and format. It just now includes dudes. Um, I know Angie has links to the amazing Iowa page that has uh, curriculum and lesson extension ideas. I know um, uh, one of my colleagues, Connie Beecher, is a literacy professor at Iowa State who also has an appointment in extension and works a lot with libraries. Some of you may know her. And she's got a great backpack program where um, she and students at Iowa State create backpacks for students with a book and then all sorts of activities that go along with it and parents can check out the backpack. So it's like a like a whole day's worth of activities with the book and they created one that goes along with Amazing Iowa Women and I know she'd be really interested in working with other libraries to do that. They've also been talking about doing it with the Amazing Iowa Athletes book as well. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's other questions here. Julia Addington, Yes, she is included um, in the book. She's in one of the insert boxes. Um, I'm sure there are incredible women that everyone knows that they're hoping that they see in here. Um, but I guarantee that even people um, who know Iowa history really well have come away from this book really surprised and have definitely learned things that they didn't know before. So, and I, I actually, Katie, I, one of the things I'll say too about there is that one of the things we talk about in libraries is like, what are the extension activities? And I think the extension activity there is the goal of this is to make you say, and did you know from our town we have? Like, to me, that's the biggest inspiration always. Like, not in this book, but did you know from this town, from this town? So, like, I love that kind of, that, that kind of connection, and it's a thing that librarians kind of, uh, kind of go on like naturally it. so um, well, and, and I told everybody also the amazing Iowa athletes Katie you and I talked about this the cover of amazing Iowa athletes I tell everybody all the time what is the only college football stadium in the country named after a black person it's Jack Trice Stadium I love that portrait of him I think it's, it's isn't it I, gorgeous 
I love it. I love it. And I think it just really gives a full breadth and depth to his life and like who he was and I love it. And I just think it's great. So, um, so that's some of my thoughts. Um, I was wondering if you could read a little, if you could just pick a little bit and just read a passage so that people can kind of get an idea of the writing itself. Like, I'd love that you showed up the samples, but if you could just pick up the example of like anyone, even Adeline to start with, because she was first. Let's um, do Adeline. I think that's a great place yeah. to start. And something that's really special about this portrait, um, which I think is really beautiful. This was a college student who is Meskwaki herself who created the portrait of Adeline Wanity, who's a Meskwaki woman, and we think she just did an amazing job. And the original portrait is hanging in the Meskwaki Cultural Center on the settlement, which I think is super special. And the biography was written um, with the help of Adeline's family. They were incredibly gracious. I met with them on the settlement um, as I was doing research for the book, and they helped shape this biography. So Adeline Wanity, Kitakosia and Meskwaki, was born into the Meskwaki Nation's Wolf Clan on the settlement near Tama in 1910. When she was young, the U.S. government forced her and many other American Indian children far away from their families to attend boarding schools that banned their traditions. Adeline believed that was wrong and wanted American Indian children to attend local schools controlled by their tribes. As the first woman elected to the Meskwaki Tribal Council, she worked with others to make that happen developed a textbook to teach children the Meskwaki language and culture, and helped linguists at the Smithsonian create a Meskwaki alphabet. Adeline was also an artist, an advocate for women's rights and tribal health care, and the mother to nine children in an alcohol-free home that was really important for the family to include. In 1993, Adeline was the first American Indian to be inducted into the Iowa Women's Hall of Fame. And in the little insert box is another famous teacher, um, one of the most famous teachers in Iowa's history is Jane Elliott, who taught elementary school in her hometown of Riceville. In 1968, after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Jane wanted to teach her white students about racism. She created a lesson where she discriminated against the kids with brown eyes one day and against kids with blue eyes the next day. The students were devastated, but it made a huge impact. Even as adults, they vowed not to discriminate against anyone. Her controversial experiment became famous, and she started doing the activity with adults all over the world. She is still an educator and activist against racism today. So that's just the first page there and about teachers. And I like that it starts with teachers because I am a teacher. And I think it's especially appropriate to start with an indigenous woman because that's the history of our state and the history of the land that we're all on today. And I, so one of the things I loved about that as the first page, I was sold, I opened up the book and I got to that and I was like, we're done, we're sold, this is it. <laughs> but one of the things I love was that it's, like putting them together by profession. So that's another, instead of being like, they were both from the same part of the state or they were both from the same era. Like, mm -hmm. so in this, on the page about students, like you have a, a very famous historical student activist. Yes. Paired who, who, a very famous historical student activist paired with a new student activist. So kind of the, by, by grouping them by profession or by activism or by like what they're known for, it really allows you, even, like even putting Jane in, like she taught like primary school with, I taught language, I, I learned, I preserved cultural language. It allows you, it really gives the book that breadth and kind of like depth. And I, and that's the same thing in the athlete's title as well, that it, it gives you a, a lot wider range to talk about it, to talk about different people. It does. And the athletes book too. I, I'm sorry, I don't have a copy here with me, but um, we were worried we couldn't come up with 26 sports for the alphabet, but we did it. I think my favorite one is probably bowling. It's a really great story. I'm just <laughs> going to tease it because I want people to buy the book, but I, that might be one of my favorite entries in the book. And I have to say, um, Mike Draper at Raygun was the one who convinced us to, to do athletes after like, oh, maybe people who aren't really into women's history will be interested in sports, but we were super sneaky. We're like, okay, we'll still talk about activism and we'll still talk about women like through the lens of athletics. And I, I thought I'd have to like really kind of push myself to get into it, but I loved researching those stories and we ended up being just as blown away by those stories as we were by the set of women um, that we included. It's, it's really incredible. Like there's a, a man who's a, an international champion archer who also just happens to not have arms and uses his legs to be 
an archer and he competes against people with arms and beats them every time. I mean, there's just really inspiring, super incredible stories and really famous people that I, I don't think many Iowans know have Iowa connections like Caitlyn Jenner of the Kardashian fame um, got her start as an athlete. And of course, is one of the most famous Olympians ever um, in Lamoni, Iowa. That's where she was recruited to play football and then ended up um, getting sort of shifted over to track there. And that's where she started competing in decathlons, which is in Iowa, in <laughs> Iowa, Who, in, in yeah. Lamoni, Iowa. Right. So yeah. we're really thoughtful about making sure um, to Angie's point that every region of the state has people that they can connect with too. Jen, I don't know if you remember whenever we did the little stars with the states, yeah, we would you, laugh that our you, geographies like not that good and we'd have to figure out where the star should go. But so can you get a little, can you bring that up close to the camera okay. so they can see what the, what the maps look like uh, for each person? Mm -hmm. So for each person, wherever they're from, it kind of tell, it has the, it has the star so you can see what part of the state they're from. And as someone who moved here less than two years ago, that was super helpful. I not being sarcastic when I would look at it, I'd be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I'm curious if there's other questions and I know we're, we're running short on time here too, but please, please don't hesitate to email, um, whether it's with ideas for people we should include in future books, uh, whether it's because you want to partner with some kind of programming, um, please reach out to me, to Jen, to my colleague, Connie Beecher. Um, that's the Iowa State professor who is in early literacy and does a ton of library extension work. Um, we have lots of ideas and would just be super excited to get this into the hands of kids and families and teachers all across the state. Um, and I, I, I want to say a couple things real quick, but I do want to encourage everybody to answer questions. One thing, some, so Annette saw, said, I don't know if you saw, we could do programming for a whole year just from this inspiring book. I agree because think how many ways you could do it. You could do it about professions. You could do it about regions. You could do it about eras, so much stuff. Um, and every month too. Also, so like, uh, Katie and Jen, libraries love like um, Black History Month and Native American history. We love that. We love to display around that. And imagine that now every time you do one of those displays, you could have someone from Iowa featured in the display. So like it wouldn't have to be the same 10 people that you did every month. Like you could feature actual people from Iowa in those displays. Okay. So that's one thing. Thing two, I also wanted to say all this talk about curriculum. Again, when I said you couldn't have predicted, I think a lot of us know people who are homeschooling this year who are looking for curriculum, who are looking for ways to enhance. And I think a lot of us have families who are discussing that. And this is kind of that conflict. How did we do the research for that? How did we find these people in Iowa? What Iowa archives and sources did we find to pull from? Who could you find? Who would you include? Who would you write a history about? So I think, again, another another connection that way. Um, Brianna, uh, Bri, who's from Clear Lake said, when we're able to do author visits again, I think you will be busy. Uh, Katie also uh, is, uh, if you wanna email her about doing a virtual visit or some libraries, we talked about that too. If a couple libraries wanna say, hey, we'll do a collaboration or, so um, you'll see that also in other places. The other thing I wanted to mention to everybody too is, um, I want to give a shout out to how I discovered this book and how I discovered this book is that the Ely Public Library had purchased a copy and had it on display. And when I went to visit the Ely Public Library from across the room, you know, and they're like, I met my eyes met and I was in love with him from across the room. I saw this amazing Iowa women book and I walked to it. So I discovered this book through Iowa libraries. So I've got to give a shout out to my peeps at Ely Public Library, Sarah and Tracy. Remember when we spent a beautiful day together last year? I do when people saw other people, but that's how I found out about this book to make this selection. So I want to give a shout out to them and they already had it in their library um, and they had it on display out for all the kids to see. So shout other out questions. Jen's, like incredible graphic design too, because we do judge books by the cover, right? Yes. So the yes. Fact the cover like sucked you in from across the, the clouds. Room, really happy. The clouds. Like I was like, I want to go to wherever that is. <laughs> like I want to do that. Um, and also seeing the font for both of them, the amazing Iowa, font, like seeing that really big overlaid, I think is just really great. So Jen, that is another shout out to you and to all the Raygun team. Like it's so visually appealing. Um, it's not overwhelming. And I think for the librarians, I want to say to you guys, to me, and you heard a little bit about Katie's text, you can see what wide appeal this has to readers. So like younger kids, uh, as well as independent readers, it's not too complicated text, the full color portra portraits, um, you know, I think that really opens it up to a wide, uh, uh, a wide range of readers, so. 
Yes, so that's who's on the cover of Amazing Iowa Women. They're talking a little bit in the chat. So um, uh, Sam asked who the woman on the cover was. Is the second black Yeah, woman I should just say it for everyone for the recording too. It's Willie Stevenson Glanton, and she's just this like absolutely incredible woman who was um, only the second black woman who has become or became a lawyer in Iowa, and she was the first black woman elected to the Iowa State Legislature. Legislature. Actually, she and a, a black man were uh, elected in the same year. Oh, I'll stop my share here. Um, and yeah, she's just a tremendous uh, civil rights advocate, lawyer, legislator, general, incredible person. And that portrait is by Zebediah Walls, who is also just an amazing Iowa artist. She has um, women cards that came out after um, Hillary Clinton was accused of playing the woman card. She made a literal deck of cards that have just astonishing women from all over the U S and, and really, I think even the world, like a deck of playing cards. And I saw that and I was like, well, that's perfect for this and reached out and she was thrilled to be part of the project. Um, yeah, it's just a cool network of people involved and, in the project. And so the other librarian tie that I want for all of you that are here and the other reason I, we so often encourage kids you get to tell your story. Like that's a huge thing we want. So like this idea that like they made this book in Iowa, this book is made in Iowa by Iowans. So like, not only is it a story about like all of these people are from here or have connections to here or developed or grew or learned or were shaped by here, but we did this. We made this book. We wrote this book about people who are from here. We designed this book. We drew this book. We published this book. We did that. And I think especially as we're looking at this, the, the world that we're in now to being able to say to your kid patrons, you know what, write one about your mom, write one about your grandpa. You know, nobody knows that you're, I tell people this all the time. My grandfather rode the last coal car. He was a coal miner. He rode the last coal, coal, coal car out of Dawson, New Mexico. That's a whole family story we would tell all the time. Imagine if I wrote that as a story. So that idea of like, you can do this yeah. across the board, especially now, I think is super relevant. There's two I want to shout out real quick with regards to that. This is one of the most beautiful pictures. I was so unsure of how someone would illustrate this. The section is about unsung women. Do I have a minute to read this one? I, I really yes. love this one. Okay. I have a minute to read this one. Um, it's unsung women, amazing even if they aren't in the news. The letter U stands for unsung to remind us of all the women who have not received credit for the amazing things they have done. For example, many women do unpaid work in their home, whether it's cooking, cleaning, caring for children, or helping older relatives. There are also many women who hold important jobs, like farm workers, food service workers, factory workers, and more, that pay very little. Their labor rarely receives the respect and appreciation it deserves. It is also important to remember that women have always played important roles in their families, towns, states, and nations, even when they did not have full rights or were kept out of positions of power. Women found ways to contribute and make change. For years, many historians did not believe that women's stories were important to tell and did not pay attention to the many ways women participated in their communities. Luckily, this is starting to change. Just because many women's stories weren't written down doesn't mean they weren't important. And then it's this gorgeous picture of generations of women's hands um, holding a seed that's growing. And then Alex Barr, who was the artist who I thought was able to join us today, um, created this incredible portrait. It was just, I was so excited to have it in. And so the X uh, stands for the next generation. And it, it has a, a kind of, I hope inspiring paragraph about all the things that Iowa women will do in the future and that readers of this book are gonna be part of that change that, that's being made. So to your point, Andy, I think that's great. And there's also just extension activities built into the insert boxes for those with ideas for how kids can celebrate the women in their life, especially women in their lives who they admire greatly, but aren't famous, um, you know, aren't the first at something or um, aren't in a position of formal power, but they know that they're incredible women nonetheless. So I'm excited about that. Woohoo! That was a perfect, that was a perfect end. Uh, one quick thing, more thing, although everybody can keep saying it in the chat. So everybody wants to know, you said you're gonna make more, what are the other ones that you're thinking about? Yes. Well, th and this is a plug. I wish I had like a Kickstarter. Maybe I'll, I'll use the Angie's list to send around our Kickstarter that we have to get going. But um, the, the, we've had a lot of requests for scientists 
Um, we've had also, I think because Jen is an artist and I love art, we're really excited to do one of our artists. And then the one that maybe we wanted to do initially at the very beginning is one about activists. So activism is woven into all the books. We have centered it in all of them, but there are, are just really some incredible people. And then to have the alphabet representing 26 different um, issues that people are fighting on, issues of justice and and um, rights, that that's really exciting to me as well, that we're gonna expose young readers to all these different places from um, voting rights to prison reform, to civil rights, to gender justice, that we would be able to expose kids to, to struggles that are happening and the ways that Iowans are contributing to making the world a better place. Because so much of it, I, I've been telling everybody, I bought this book immediately for all my nieces and nephews, and none of them live in Iowa. But so much of this is like people think that this state is nothing, or people don't think about this state at all. Or they think the same thing everybody thinks, that it's full of all white people, that only white people live here. And right. so like the idea that expanding that conversation of who is and always has been a part of the state, I think is unbelievable. So, um, so. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen to wrap up. Um, everybody, Jen, Katie, thank you both so much. This was great. And they didn't have to hear me talk about the entire time. Oh, so Jessie Field Shamba is in the book. What is she under? What'd you put her under? Um, she's actually in an insert. Um, because she's more famous, she's in Denise O'Brien, which I love this portrait. It's so beautiful, um, is a farmer. And so we have other women that have been big in agricultural history in the little insert. All right. Love it. Okay. I'm going to reshare my screen. Um, everybody, I hope that this got you pumped for this book. Um, and with that in mind, I want to go back to um, Jen and Katie are still going to be looking at the, uh, at the chat while I'm talking. Um, so if you want to continue to uh, mention things in the chat, you can um, while I go back to present. There we go. Um, okay, so our follow-ups as we wrap up. You can order the books for your library. Jen it gave those con the contact information for people again. I think she'll put it in there. Remember, you're going to get this slide deck. This slide deck, these are live links, okay? So you can order the books for your library. Raygun, um, I talked to them about if you are tax exempt, they'll work with you about it. They can invoice you if you're doing it through the library. They're happy to work with you for whatever payment situation you have going on. Um, at 2 o'clock, Boop, boop, boop. So like in 10 minutes, a special sub site about this at the Iowa Center for the book um, is going live. It'll have more information about the book. It'll have a complete listing of all of the artists featured, um, as well as Katie's bio and some contact information. So um, at, at two o'clock, that'll go live. By the time you get this deck, you'll be able to click on it. You can also visit Amazing Iowa for information on the curriculum that Katie described, as well as uh, a list of the sources she used, more information information on amazing Iowa athletes, some information about the exhibit, which someday we will all be able to be together in person again, and you can have it come to your library. And we're going to make even more stuff like Remember I told you the National Book Festival was canceled, so we had to get creative. One of the super cool things that happened is Kidlit TV. We hired Kidlit TV to make a video with Katie that you can share on all of your social media, that you can share with your patrons, that we want everybody to see. They've made them from, and not just the one from Iowa, tons of other states participated in this too. So there's like one from South Dakota and South Dakota's book is super cool. And it's about this um, Native American chief who I'd never even heard of before. And it was written by one of the members of his tribe and I'd never even heard of it before. And the one from Massachusetts, they're all the same. No, is the new kid. So Jerry Craft has one talking about why he wrote it and it's super cool. And this is a link. You're not, it's, you're not gonna hear it. I'm just gonna play it real quick for you to show you how cute it is. <laughs> So you can see that's five, it's a five minute, it's already on YouTube right now. So that's ready to share. Um, it's super cute um, and has cute music and stuff. So just trust me. Um, what I want you as the wrap up to do is I want you to think, I hope that you have been inspired to think of ways that you can program, not just around this book, which is amazing, but about the Great Reads from Great Places program. This is a, this is the year to promote to your patrons that they can travel places through reading. This is the year to promote to your patrons. Hey, have you heard about this book from South Dakota that is our neighbor? I think one of the Dakotas is, I can never tell. I don't even know where we are geographically. You guys don't be mad. Um, 
But I also want you to think some, I've given you some ideas throughout this and I'm gonna continue to do that. But I want you to think about not just ways that can enhance your collection, but your programs. Imagine if you could have a local history speaker come in and talk about the history of your town or the history of your community or did you know this person was from here? So I really hope that this has got you thinking, not just about in-person programs, but so many different things that you can share in so many different resources. Um, my last wrap up for you. Um, Oh my gosh, I don't know what I just did. I'm sorry. Nope. My last wrap up for you. Yacht Club is next Tuesday. Yacht Club is our young adult and children's hot topic discussion group. You have to register for it by uh, Friday, by Saturday. You get the assignment ahead of time, then we get together and discuss it. We only have 10 slots left. If you want to register, do that today. Um, next Monday, um, is a chat with me and Scott about the annual survey. Um, to do that, you have to be to, in my Zoom room. If you need the link to that, you need to email me directly. I don't like to put it out there everywhere because uh, the world is terrible and people Zoom bomb. So if you wanna come to that from one to two, uh, it's gonna basically be me and Scott asking, answering your questions about the um, annual survey. And I've included these, again, when you get this, when you get this slideshow, these will be live links, but I want to remind you some of the things I've been working on. I created a database for um, e-learning and homeschooling resources. I created the COVID-19 idea swap, which has ideas for programs, supplies for all ages, videos to copy from other libraries, story times. Um, and I've created a Wakeland, uh, a Wakeland collection development board. It's basically Pinterest boards with reading advisory recommendations. There's one for short stories for teenagers. There's one for scary middle grade. There's one for books by black and indigenous people of color, early readers, the hardest uh, kind of category to find. So those are some of the resources I've been working on. I, I mentioned them 8,000 time, times, so it never hurts to mention them 1,000, 8,001. I hope that you were all excited by this. I hope this got everybody feeling good and excited. Most of all, I wanna say thank you to Katie and Jen. I wanna say thank you for joining us today, uh, taking the time out of your lives to do this. And I, I really wanna say thank you for creating this book um, so that we can share it all this year with um, libraries and librarians and parents and kids and families and grownups and teachers and all of Iowa. Um, I wanna say thank you to all of you for attending PopYS. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so glad you got there. We did this fun reveal. I hope it was a, a cool, fun, bright spot, something to look forward to.